String Bean used to play it. I always liked String Bean, Dave Aikman, um, Grandpa Jones, all those old time banjo players kind of. One thing I liked a lot about their style of playing and all was had a lot of comedy in it. And like what Troy Bosworth, Leroy Troy, as they call him, is doing nowadays. Well, let me get off here. We got something going on out here. We'll see y'all next time. All right. Now, get, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Old time banjo playing. Comedy. That's one thing I like about a lot of the old stuff, and especially with the Grand Ole Opry, early Grand Ole Opry stuff. Uncle Dave Macon uh, coming on there. I don't know if he was the first Grand Ole Opry star, but he was definitely, I think I'd heard somewhere that he was like the first Grand Ole Opry star. Didn't start his musical career till he was in his 50s. And he was really a throwback to the old vaudeville stuff, which was coming out of the old minstrel show stuff. Now that brings up a topic that, um, you know, that, really don't get talked about so much but it's getting more attention nowadays uh shedding light on the subject you know all this business about banjo and 
comes from Africa, also associated with white rednecks and hillbillies. It kind of, a lot of that happened, you know, obviously during people that know a lot about banjos and banjo history, banjo playing. Yeah, it was, it's, it's known as an African instrument primarily. Uh, it's a very ancient instrument, possibly one of the first stringed instruments ever invented. Uh, who knows exactly where it started, but it definitely has African roots and it's particularly having this fifth string, drone string up here, and especially the frail and or claw hammer, drop thumb, all that stuff definitely has African roots. And it was brought over in, during the slave trade, you know, and, and I mean, there's nothing good about slavery. I despise slavery in all forms. And you know, these days, there's, and back there in the whole Trump thing and all that, you know, there was a lot of racial turmoil going on in our country. And I was living in Nashville. It was kind of a hotbed for that type stuff. Um, a lot of cultural melting pot, I guess you could call it. Now I'm back down here in my hometown, Philadelphia, Mississippi, which is traditionally known as one of the most racist towns in existence. I mean, they made a movie, Mississippi Burning, was about this town. It was a bad place. A lot of bad stuff happened. But as, as far as banjo playing relates to all of it, you know, it's just a lot of bad stuff went down. And, but I could just go on and on about it, and I don't even know where to start, to be honest with you. But I was talking about, before I got on that tangent, was talking about banjo playing and comedy go, going back to the minstrel show well minstrel music was basically making fun of black people and um i can see why how how they turned away from the instrument and wanted to get away from the banjo because the way it was portrayed in the minstrel shows you know and it, it sucks, you know, that, well, it's making fun of people and stuff. But at the same time, banjo comedy was born. You know, it kind of came, it started having the comedy stuff that I like so much about old time banjo playing, the showmanship and whatnot. So it was, it's just always a combination of things, good and bad, you know, coming out of things. Life on this planet is full of bad stuff. There, I mean, it's just loaded, you know, it's, it's, it's imminent, it's prominent. You're gonna die, you know? I mean, I hate to be such negative whatever, but you know, the bottom line is, you know, it's entropy will take hold and, and I, you know, I'm not gonna be some kind of nihilist or whatever, but it's the fight for noticing the good parts about things, really, for me in life, it's about trying to notice the good parts while we're here because it doggone goes by fast you know I'm 42 years old now and it seems like yesterday I was high school student or even a kid you know that and it just seems like the years go by faster and faster so the best thing really there is to do is try to focus on the good parts of it all even though a lot of bad crap happened you know with the slavery and the best thing we can do is Focus on what good come out of it, you know, or the best I can do. I can't speak for everybody else, but, you know, and, and I can be a very negative person and get in a real negative mindset. It's easy for me to go on a rant, you know. I, I was telling uh, Nikki the other day that, or this morning, if I went on my channel and just ranted about stuff, I'd probably have a million views, you know. Seems like people like to see people be mad and be upset. I don't know why. It's, it's that whole thing about comedy, you know, I guess, getting tying it all back into that. There's always a tragic element. You know, it's a weird thing about the human species. And it's like growing up, I used to love, and I still do, one of my favorite comedy acts ever, as well as probably most, most people. I'm not a minority in this group for sure is 
the three stooges for God's sake. And I mean, the whole routine is based on, they're basically just sitting there beating the crap out of each other. <laughs> and we find it hilarious. <laughs> There's this thing about being a human being where you think it's funny to see other people suffer. Uh, you're saying, I guess in your mind, you're sitting there saying, well, at least it ain't me. You know, at least I ain't that stupid or whatever. I always felt like an idiot, dumbass, pardon my French, you know. I always felt like I was less than others, you know. And that comes back around into this whole thing about with the racial, you know, conflict that we had in the recent past. It seems to be dying down a little, thank God, you know. And uh, during, during the whole corona thing, it got real bad everything got real bad but as far as you know modern African American culture banjo playing is not a, much of a thing you know it's maybe a small group there is, there is a group and I'm glad you know but I can see how the culture got away from it at a certain time and um uh, I can see how that they would want to distance herself from it, but as far as being a white person and playing it and playing that style of music, uh, and as I was growing up as a kid and didn't know as much about the history of it, it would be stereotyped as like a white redneck, you know, or I'm from Mississippi, so it really wouldn't call us hillbillies, you'd call it a redneck, you know. And, you know, associated with, like, extreme right-wing politics and stuff like that. Okay, I don't associate with any political party. Uh, I consider myself an individual, a human being. Uh, so, I don't get into the politics. I'll leave that for everybody else. And I try to stay off of the religion topic, too. But... As far as racism goes, I can understand how the black culture got, you know, screwed over and how they, modern kids and people my age, can kind of be pissed off at the white culture. But, uh, you know, having said that, I, I don't come from that side of the fence that was a slave owner, dictators and all that. Man, I come from poverty. You know, I don't know anything about controlling people and I don't want no part of it. I've always hated that. I've always felt like a slave myself. When I had to go get a regular job, you know, I, I felt like I was a slave. And uh, so, you know, I can relate more to the slave culture than I can to the, the, the culture of the aristocrat you know I don't know anything about that so you ain't gotta you, you can know you ain't gotta be mad at me you know uh, and even with the banjo playing and stuff it all tying in together and but I I do it because I don't know I just like the sound of it it it, it, it always I don't know I just it, I, as soon as I first heard it when I was a kid I liked it and want to learn how to do it. And, you know, this day and time, everybody's, you still have a lot of racism, especially down here in the South. But you know, you'd be surprised. In my hometown here in Philadelphia, Mississippi, we get along pretty good, different races and all. We got Choctaw, and we got a lot of black, a lot of white. We all get along pretty good around here. In the past, this place is known as being a real terrible place, very racist. And there's still an element of racism that floats around. But for the most part, you know, like when I grew up, I went to public school. I didn't, like I said, I'm not a rich kid. Nothing against rich people. There's plenty of cool rich people too. Um, you know, but I, I definitely didn't grow up like that. And I went to public school and some of my best friends were black and Choctaw. 
I didn't I what I didn't come up being racist, none of that, so and around here we all we all still get along good. I mean I ain't gonna say there ain't some people that's complete opposite, but it ain't as bad as, as they make like it is. But it has been. And there's places that it is. But anyway. I don't know. I don't know how I got off on that topic talking about <coughs> banjo and country comedy, but that's what I was before I got on the tangent, I was talking about the comedy, you know, and I like I like that they used to have a lot of comedy in music. And nowadays it seems like not so much. Everything's real serious and got a lot of got to be real sexy or whatever. And I guess that's what sells, you know, but I don't care nothing about it. It's boring to me. I just soon sit around and watch some damn paint dry on the wall as I had watch damn some of this modern, you know, whatever. I mean, I know this musician's way better than I am, way better. I mean, I, I don't stand a chance. Hell, I used to live in Nashville, man. I know how it is. Some people, dime a dozen, beautiful looking people that can really sing and really play everywhere. Playing at the bars for tips and maybe a hundred dollars a piece. You know, it just, it don't appeal to me. I've done it, I played bar music, but I still play this hillbilly stuff. But I played bar at the bars, and you know it was all right. But I mean, I I got kind of burnt out on it, to be honest with you. I like just playing for my own enjoyment more than lugging this mess around, all driving all over the place, barely making any money to get by. You know, I I just like doing it for my own enjoyment right now, more so than all that. I may get back into it someday and do a little bit of playing at different places, but as far as right now, I'm just kind of in hibernation on that. But anyway, I've talked long enough today, so it looks like I've been blabbing for about, I don't know, 12 or 13 minutes, so that's plenty long. Internet sucks out here. It'll take that video all day to upload, so I better get off here. See y'all next time. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like the video, man, if you like it. If you don't, don't. <laughs> Subscribe to it if you do. Hit the notification button so it'll keep getting notifications. I'm trying to get more viewers on YouTube. I like the idea of being able to communicate and have friends over the internet like this, share the music like that. Like I was just saying, I'm burnt out on hauling this shit around, going to different places to play. I just soon sit here and do it in the living room and share it all over the daggum country and we can all be friends and share ideas back and forth if you comment say something to me i i will do my best to answer back i always try to read all that stuff so anyway have a good day see y'all next time all right here's me trying to play the fiddle okay there you go don't sound like crap because that's the way it goes. I ain't. I just started learning it, so here we go.
Oh, well. What?